Good morning, everybody. Pastor Ken here with Rise and Shine. I guess it's time to face another day. What an opportunity, what a privilege. I greet you in the name of the Lord. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about prayer this morning. One of the greatest desires of people through the ages has been the desire to communicate and have a relationship with God. I can say, first of all, I believe God has a desire for that too. We know in the very beginning, before sin got his ugly head in there, God would come down and walk and talk with Adam and Eve in the garden. He wanted a relationship. He wanted to talk with them. He wanted prayer. So this past week we had uh, a camp meeting here at uh, Mountaintop. And uh, one of our dear prayer warriors in the church gave this testimony that they came to church one night And they were not well. I don't need to go into detail what was wrong physically. They needed a healing. And as we do in most services, we have a time of prayer for the people who come with needs. It's ministry time. So I gave a signal for those who are prayer leaders and prayer partners to take their designated places and begin to pray for other people. This person gave a testimony that in spite of how bad they were feeling themselves, they took their regular place of prayer and began to pray for other people. And in the middle of praying for somebody else, what they needed God to do for them happened. They got an answer to prayer. They got a miracle. They got a healing. They weren't even they weren't even they weren't even asking God at that moment for it. At that moment, they were praying for somebody else. And they got a miracle in prayer. I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm so excited about that concept. The enemy could just get you to quit. Just not pray for others and not, not give it away and not be compassionate. If he could get you to do that, he could deprive you of your America. And I really think there's a lot of truth in what happened this weekend for that lady. She said, While I was praying for somebody else, I got a healing. I got a miracle. <laughs> So today, I want to encourage you, give it away today. Give it away. Give it away today, okay? The word says, freely you have received. Freely give it, okay? Disperse it, give it away. Believe me, <laughs> You can't outgive and you can't extinguish what God's going to bring into your life. The more you give, the more the Lord will give to you. If you know that yours is a prayer ministry, no matter how bad you feel, give it away. Give it away. Can't help but think of that little boy in the Bible and a few fish and 
few loaves. The response of the disciples of what's that among so many? And you got 5,000 people to feed. It's nothing till it gets in the hand of Jesus, but when it gets in the hand of Jesus, it becomes enough to feed 5,000 men plus women and children with 12 baskets full left over. One basket for every one of the disciples to remind them as they went on their way. <laughs> Give it away. Can you just imagine when the Lord blessed that loaves and fishes? At that point, there was the original number, just a few loaves and fishes. But when the disciples took them, can you can you imagine? And this is my ma imagination, but can you imagine Peter bending over and holding this loaves and and saying loaf of bread, saying to the first person softly, "Just take a little bit. There's not very much to go around." <laughs> and the person takes a little bit off, and all of a sudden, it multiplies and grows. <laughs> to the next person, just take a little bit. This is all we got. And they take some off. And right in front of Peter's eyes, right in front of the disciples' eyes, it grows right back on. <laughs> this is my imagination. Can you imagine the disciples finally, finally getting from that little spot over into the spot where they might have said, just take all you want. <laughs> There's lots to go around. Uh, it's a miracle in the process right here. <laughs> a miracle in the process. But the process was where the miracle took place. While they were giving it away, dispersing of it, and ministering to the people. It just kept growing and growing and multiplying until 5,000 men plus women and children. That, that probably was over 10,000 people until they were all fed. It was in their hands. It was in their hands, the miracle working power of God Almighty. Was, they had it was right there. Jesus blessed it. The Father multiplied it right in their hands as they gave it away. So I would encourage you today, give it away. Say, what? Why don't, what do I have to give? Well, when somebody smiles at you, does it make you feel good and warm and important and special? Give it away. Give it away. When you see somebody doing a good job, why don't you say, thanks for serving me. Give it away. Do you know how good that makes a waitress feel? When you see somebody with a heavy heart, just reach out and touch their shoulder and say, how you doing today? And make sure you wait for the answer. This has happened to me many, many times. And then pray. Doesn't have to be a long prayer. God already knows what they need. But they need somebody in between. Pray for the sick. Raise the dead. Heal the brokenhearted. It's in your hands. Give it away. Okay? Give it away. It might be somebody at the gas station that uh, just yesterday a man told me this story. 
The story was of a lady who was on her way to church on a Wednesday night. And she had this overwhelming feeling that she should stop at the gas station. Now she had just filled the gas tank up in the car. She had $20 in her pocketbook. But this urgency to do this was so strong, she pulled in, put the nozzle in the gas tank, and the tank took a dollar, I think it was a dollar, I'm going to say a dollar ninety-five. She's asking the Lord all the time, what is going on here? She'd become familiar with the voice of God. She knew the Lord wanted her to be there at that moment. She went in and paid her bill, come out, still just totally bewildered what was going on. And she looked over at the pump beside her car, and there was an Oriental family standing there, and she could tell by the tone of their voices and by the look of despair in their faces that they had a problem. And she walked over and said, you know, is there anything I can help you with? It's kind of obvious you got a situation here. And uh, the man who was driving the car said, well, we pulled in here to get some gasoline and put the gas in only to find out after we put the gas in, <laughs> we can't find any money. We can't find, we don't, we don't have any money. We thought we did, but we don't. And she said, well, how much did you put in? Now the change that she had in her hand left from the $20 after she'd put a dollar ninety some in her car because it was already full. Matched what the number was on the gas tank where the Chinese, this Oriental family had taken gas and she handed it to them. It was exactly the right amount. You guessed it. <laughs> Gave it away. Give it away. I just can't tell you the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Give it away. Give it away. Cast your bread upon the water and it'll come back to you. Give it away. I was in a restaurant, my wife and I, and we're sitting there, and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart concerning our the lady that was serving us. She looked like she was really um, on the verge of tears. That's what she looked like. And when it come time to pay the bill, I uh, told Charlotte, I'm gonna do something here. And I, uh, as qu quietly as I could do it, I just slipped extra money to her. And, uh, and I thanked her for serving us. She didn't look at how much was there until she went over to the cash register, and then she came back to inquire if I had made a mistake. I said, no, I didn't make a mistake. Well, I mean, I'm capable of making mistakes, but... That was no mistake. I said, I want you to have that. Thanks for serving. I just felt in my heart that you needed help. And she broke down and bawled like a baby. She said, as soon as I'm done this shift, I got to go see my mother and my family. I think, it was, I think it was in North Carolina. And she hardly had any money at all. And it would be enough money to take her there. There was sickness in the family. It was back when COVID was in full bloom. 
Uh, I don't want no praise for this. I don't even want a reward for it. That's why I'm free to tell you. Because I think when you do something like that, if you want to get a reward for it, <laughs> you ought to just keep quiet about it. But I'm trying to help you grow by it. So I'm giving it away. I'm content. I've already had my reward. My reward was when I saw her start to cry. My reward was when I realized that God had used what I had as the loaves and the fishes, and I had given it away, and she had been blessed. We walked into that same restaurant the other day, and that same waitress was on duty. Now, this is months ago, and she come ripping over to our table <laughs> just to thank us once again. And uh, we were able to have an impact on her life. That, that's, not the, that's not the end of it because I know that Charlotte and I are going to have an opportunity to minister to this lady. We already have. We've, we've already have. And we're going to get an extended opportunity to minister to her because we gave it away. Learn the secret of giving it away. You have a great day. Father, I don't know who the person is yet today, but there's somebody that needs your help and you're going to use me to encourage them, pray for them, bless them, or help them in some way. So I asked in the name of Jesus that every one of us that are in this network this morning will be a good giver today because you have given us so much. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. I'll see you later on Rise and Shine.